Beautiful soul, have you ever wanted to speak to angels? Do you believe angels can support you in your daily life? If this is you, go to my website homepage, theangelmedium.com and sign up for my weekly angel message email. As a gift for signing up, I'm giving you access to free resources, including 31 healing meditations that if you do daily are going to help you hear your angels and your own intuition more clearly. Start using these today and you'll see changes in 31 days. Now, take a deep breath. Feel the presence of your angels as they fill you with love, joy, peace, bliss, and ease. And remember, your angels say the messages that resonate with you in today's episode are meant just for you. Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to the Angels and Awakening podcast. I'm your host and author, Julie Jancis. And friends, today we're here with Gary Zukoff. You might know him from his books, The Seed of the Soul. Um, and uh, you've got so many different books about spiritual partnerships and physics that you have brought into the spiritual realm. I'm so excited to have you here today, Gary. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us. You're welcome, Julie. There's nothing I love more than talking about this major transformation in human consciousness that's happening now. There's nothing like it that has ever happened before. And I'm really pleased to be here to share what I know about it with you and with your listeners. Thank you. And thank you for all of your work. Sometimes I find that spirit kind of walks me through an experience right before an interview in order to bring my awareness and attention to a question that they want to bring through. And I find that sometimes spirit uses uh, spiritual interviewers, journalists, teachers, um, and their own lives in order to help under pe other people understand their own lives better. Um, so today, I just don't feel like I'm in my energy. Um, we've got a puppy, two two little babies. We, we only had one little girl and we always wanted to have two kids. And so our, our dogs became our second babies. And one of them is just going through something right now for the last couple of months. I've been feeding him by hand. Um, we've taken him in time after time, checked everything, his teeth, x-rays, ultrasounds. They just can't figure out what's going on with him. And I'm normally very, very in tune with my energy, um, my emotions, my feelings, my intuition. And I've noticed that as I've been going through this with fluff, um, I just don't want to tune in because I don't want to like hear the answers. And I don't, I don't, I don't want to know if something bad is coming. I just want my baby to be okay. Do you ever find that? Like, what is that? What, why can't we tune in sometimes when it's closest to us? Fear. Yeah. So how do you work through that? <laughs> well, that's what we can discuss. Yeah. How do you work through that? Working through that creates a new kind of power. Not the ability to manipulate and to control others, but the alignment of your personality with your soul. So I want to share with you and your listeners, our listeners, <clears throat> that I do not ask that you accept anything that I say is so simply because I say it, but rather that you see if you resonate with anything that I say. And if you do, then look into that, experiment with it and see what it produces in your life. And if it produces what you want, experiment some more. And if it doesn't, let it go. Don't try to wear a shoe that pinches. I. In my experience, we are in the midst of a remarkable transformation in human consciousness. It's remarkable not only because of what it is, but because there has never before been a time when the consciousness of the entire human species 
has changed at one time for everyone within a very short period of time in only a few human generations. The old consciousness was confined to the five senses, to what you can see and smell and touch and hear and, and, and taste. And according to, from the perception, the perspective of that consciousness, there's only one kind of power, and that is the ability to manipulate and control. Now we're in new territory, all seven billion of us. The new consciousness is not limited to the five senses, and it brings with it the potential of a new understanding of power, a new understanding of power and the new potential to bring it into being in your life. The new consciousness is a gift. You don't have to create it. You don't have to develop it. But you do have to create authentic power. Authentic power is the alignment of your personality with your soul. Your soul is that part of you that existed before you were born and that will exist after you die. It's the part of you that's immortal. It's not simply something that's uh, discussed in Sunday school anymore or in theological or philosophical circles. But millions of us, and now billions of us, are beginning to experience the reality that we are more than bodies and minds. We are also souls. And real power requires us to use our will and our awareness to align our personalities with our souls. And when we do that, we're able to give the gifts that we were born to give. And that's where joy and creativity and vitality and fulfillment come into your life. So every soul, and I, I um, haven't gotten through all of the Wooly Master but uh, book, but um, I was writing a second book last year, and Spirit came in and said, "If scientists have said that there's infinite infinities, every soul is infinite, and we're." Together, all that is, is infinite infinities. That's God, universe, source, all that is. And as I see it, every soul has things that it came here to express, gifts that it came here to share. And is that what you identify as the personality of the soul? Because people can get caught up between what's the personality of the human being that has wants, needs, desires, maybe driven by the egoic mind. How do you tell the difference or how do people know the difference between what is of the soul and what is of the ego? Well, that's what we're here to discuss. The Dancing Wooly Masters is a book about consciousness and quantum physics. But what we're going to discuss today is, is in a book called The Seat of the Soul. And I think that will be helpful for anyone who's interested in what we're talking about. Your personality is, in my experience, an incarnation of one part of your soul and your soul is that part of you that is immortal. Mm -hmm. Your personality is that part of you that has a birthday and will die on a certain day. It has your name. It is your life. You might say that we're on a journey from love to love. And what happens between the beginning of that journey and the end of it is your life, your experiences, in the earth school. How can you use that in the best way? And what is the best way? Well, from the perspective of the universe, there is no best way, but we are responsible for our choices. And depending upon the choices that we make, we create consequences for ourselves that are healthy, blissful, and constructive. Or, we create consequences for ourselves that are painful, destructive, 
and unhealthy. What is the choice about? The choice is about your intention. It's always about your intention. Now, an intention is not a goal. Some people say, well, our intention is, uh, my intention is to move to another city, or my intention is to become a billionaire by the time I'm 37, or my intention is to have another child. That's not an intention. That's an out-tension. It's a goal. An intention is a quality of consciousness. And this quality of consciousness infuses your words and your deeds. If that quality of consciousness is love, it's love that infuses your words and your deeds. And if that quality of consciousness is fear, that's what infuses your words and your deeds. And as we move through the earth school, at first, we're not aware, or most of us are not aware of these dynamics, but they continue to exist. And if you're not aware of your intention before you speak or you act, it's coming from fear. It requires a conscious intention to choose love. And that is what is required now to create authentic power. Authentic power, as I mentioned, is the alignment of your personality with your soul. But there's different ways to understand it. It's the ability to distinguish within yourself the difference between love and fear and choose love, no matter what's happening inside of you or what's happening outside of you. For example, what's happening inside of you may be depression or despondency or resentment or judgment. And what's happening outside of you may be another 9-11 type event or a catastrophic disaster. But when you create authentic power, you're able to distinguish love from fear within you, no matter what's happening inside of you, and no matter what's happening outside of you. And while you're doing that, choose to act in love instead of with fear. Did you know I give away a new free reading each month to a listener who leaves a five-star rating of this show on Apple Podcasts or Amazon? After you leave five stars, go over to the Contact Me page on my website, theangelmedium.com. Fill out the Contact Me form, letting us know that you gave five stars. That way, we can contact you when you win. The more five stars you leave, the more chances you have to win. And your name always stays in until you do. Don't forget to stay subscribed to our emails so that you know when you've won your free session with me. Sending you so much love and gratitude for your support on this. Thank you. Now let's dive back into the show. One of the things that I talk about is um, how to get into a state that I call oneness, where I feel when I'm in oneness, this tingly vibration all in my auric field surrounding me, all throughout my body. And it just feels like love is radiating from my heart chakra out in every direction. And you can feel this oneness with all that is. And I heard you Isn't once- a wonder Isn't that a wonderful experience? It's, it's the energy that I try and live in as much as I can. Um, I wondered when you live your life and you, you talk about these different concepts, do you feel that? Do you feel that as an energy or do you more think it as an intention or can you feel intention and that love physically as this vibrational frequency? No, you can't feel an intention. Um, you can't feel a thought. But it's important that you feel. It's very important. Because emotions are central in creating authentic power. That means the heart is a very important. So when I talk about awareness, I'm talking about emotional awareness. To create authentic power, 
Um, and that may be more than that tingly sensation that you're talking about, because what counts is what you do, what you say, and the intention with which you say it. For example, if you want to know if fear is active in you or if love is active in you, then you need to develop emotional awareness. Mm -hmm. Emotional awareness is putting your attention inside your body, not outside your body in the world. But when you feel something, especially if it's painful, let's start that way. If you feel a painful emotion, put your attention inside your body and put it in certain areas. Here's three of them. Your throat area, your chest area, and your solar plexus area. That's the area just below your rib cage. Okay. And see what physical sensations are there. Now, I'm not talking about tingling or good feeling or bad feeling. I'm talking about physical sensations like aching, throbbing, mm -hmm. burning, stinging, stabbing, mm -hmm. constricting. If you find in any of these three areas those painful or uncomfortable physical sensations, then you know that fear is active in you. Now, what does that mean? Many people think that their personality is just one thing. It's one sort of solid thing. And sometimes it's happy and sometimes it's sad and sometimes it's oh, just wants to give up and other times it's excited and joyful. But your personality is much more than that. It has many different parts, many of them. And each of them experiences the same circumstance in a different way. And if you're in a part of your personality that comes from fear, you will experience the circumstances in your life through that filter. Uh, for example, when I say fear, I'm talking about jealousy, mm. anger, resentment, disdain. Sadness? Or, pardon me? Sadness? Sadness, yes, that's fear. Uh, Every compulsion, like workaholism or getting things perfect, and every obsession, like thought that won't go away and that torments you, and every addiction, all of these are experiences of fear. <clears throat> and when you develop emotional awareness, you can recognize them. Some of them are so painful that you can't not recognize them. But when that happens, you simply know you hurt, but you might not know why or what to do about it. But when you develop emotional awareness, you know exactly what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. While you're looking in these energy centers, and you have seven of them, starting at the top mm -hmm. of your head and through your forehead and down to the base of your torso. And as energy comes into your head, through the top and down through your body and back up again, it passes through each of these energy processing centers. And when it does, it's processed either in love or fear. And if it's processed in fear, you feel painful physical sensations in the vicinity of that energy processing center. Mm -hmm. That means you're releasing energy in fear and doubt. And that's painful. It hurts. And when you act on it, it creates painful consequences. And I'm Mentioning that because it's very attractive. A frightened part of your personality is magnetically attractive. A frightened part of your personality personality that's angry knows that it's right. And it knows that other people are wrong and it needs to tell them how they're wrong and what they need to do about it. And that's what creates painful circumstances. Or some people might say difficult karma. Now, there are also parts of your personality that originate in love. And those are the parts of your personality that you experience as gratitude and appreciation and caring and contentment and awe of the universe. And when you are experiencing love, the opposite is true. When you put your attention into your energy processing centers, you'll find good feeling physical sensations there, the kind of sensations you want more of. And when you act on them, you create constructive 
blissful consequences. So that's why it's so important to distinguish between love and fear in yourself. Because until then, you're flying blind. When you get angry, you're angry and you act angry. When you're sad, you get sad and you act sad. And you're creating painful consequences for yourself. And you'll continue to do that until you inject consciousness into your life at the moment of choice. Yeah. That is the creation of authentic power. And we can talk more about that because it's really important. It's important not only because everybody wants to be happy, everybody wants to be fulfilled, everybody wants to feel valuable and worthy, and nobody likes to hurt. But until you develop emotional awareness, which is half of creating authentic power, that's where you'll be, and you'll be there for a long time. Well, you'll be there until you decide to change. And what we're talking about now is how to change. Mm -hmm. So as you were talking about those three energy centers, and I was really feeling into them with this situation that I'm going through with my pop, um, I felt like in my throat chakra, it's just this big lump in my throat, like when I try and swallow. What did it feel like? like? What did the lump feel like? It's like a big donut, but hard. Now, what does a big, hard donut feel like in your heart area, in your chest area? Does it feel good? No, no. Well, how does it feel not good? What does it feel? Does it, it ache? Just, does it throb? Yeah. Does it uh, it just makes me sick. It makes me feel nauseous. It makes me feel like I just want okay. to throw up. Nauseous is, an, is a physical experience. Uh, can you be uh, a little more specific about what you feel in your chest area? When I've too, so that was my throat, the big donut. Uh, oh, the big donuts I, in the throat. Okay. Uh -huh. When I tune into the chest, it feels like this massive. How big it, how big is the donut? How big is the donut? Is it the size of a donut? Because that's the diameter of your throat. Is yeah, it the size of, of a ping pong ball, a golf ball, an orange? How big no, is it's, it? It's the size of a regular donut, but really hard. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have a hardness in your throat mm -hmm. that fills up your throat. And how does it feel? Makes, it makes you nauseous want to gag yeah that you want to gag okay mm -hmm. and what are you feeling uh in your chest area like this huge boulder it's just like wait wait, wait boulder isn't a feeling oh what are, what are you uh, feeling physical sensations this intense very very heavy pressure just like pressure that's a, yeah where is, it, where is it located right in the center of my chest in the center of your chest is a pressure. Is it a pressure outward or inward? Are you being pressed on or are you? Pressing from the outward into my chest. Okay. That's that's more accurate, isn't it? Do you feel mm -hmm. any other physical sensations in your chest area? Not in the chest. Okay. If you take the time later and you look, you might find others. Okay. But, but let's go to your solar plexus now. Feels like I got punched in the stomach, just like what the wind. That, what out. does that feel like? What does that feel like? Physical uh, hard to breathe. No uh, physical sensation. Does it sting? Does it burn? Does it churn? Churn. Churn. That's right. You said earlier that you felt nauseous there. That's mm -hmm. a physical sensation too. Mm -hmm. Now you are beginning to develop the ability to experience a frightened part of your personality. And it's not happy, sad. It's not heavy. It has physical sensations. And you're developing the ability to say what they are. Until you can do that, you are not aware. That is emotional illiteracy. You say, I feel good. I feel tingly. I feel happy. Tingly is a physical sensation, but... The rest of them are not. So the more you can express yourself in terms of physical sensations in your energy processing centers, the more articulate and accurate you will be. And when you are articulate and accurate, that is emotional literacy. That is emotional awareness. That is when you know whether love or fear 
is active in you. Your body will tell you, and it won't lie to you. And by the way, while you're doing this, you can look at the thoughts that this part of your personality is thinking. If it's a frightened part of your personality, it'll be thinking comparative or judgmental thoughts. Thoughts like, I can't do this. This is too much for me. Or, I know all this already. Why, why, is, he why is he talking about that to me? Or, uh, she's so stupid. Or, I'm so stupid. These are the thoughts that frightened parts of your personality think. So, emotional awareness is one half of creating authentic power. A one big part of it. Here's another big part. Choice. Your choice. Your will. Your free will. A responsible choice is a choice that creates consequences for which you are willing to assume responsibility. So, while you're experiencing all of this in your body, in your throat, in your chest, in your solar plexus, and later you'll learn, you'll develop the ability to experience it in your other four energy processing centers. And you're noticing the thoughts of that frightened part of your personality. Then you can use your will to put your attention, to move your attention into a part of your personality that is loving. Put your attention into a time when you felt loved and loving, or you knew that you were. And if you can't get there all the way, reach for it, because that moves, your, that moves you in that direction, the direction of love. That's creating authentic power. And when you do that again and again, the first few times, nothing seemed to happen for me, but as I did that repeatedly, the frightened part of my personality that was painful began to lose its control over me. Mm -hmm. And as you do that, the frightened parts of your personality will lose their control over you also. Mm -hmm. And you'll be able to move beyond their control, even while you're experiencing them. As, I, as you were talking about that, I kept seeing... Um, me as a little girl with my childhood dog and how I would just go over to our lab and, and just like kind of lay on his stomach as a, a little child and, um, just kind of sending my love to that, that puppy that we used to have. Um, and I could feel like as I was holding that vision that those symptoms in those three centers start to release. It's not a matter of releasing. It's a matter of awareness and choice. It's a matter of your becoming aware of what's happening in your energy processing centers in terms of physical sensations and the thoughts that they are thinking. And while you're doing that and feeling the magnetic or the, the attraction of acting on that, choose to act from the healthiest, most grounded part of your personality that you can reach for. It might have to do with your dogs, but I would suggest that you look in terms of people. Mm -hmm. And when you do, you'll notice, or I'll point out to you now, that the process starts with turning your attention away from the world and inside to you. Because what you will find there will be an internal dynamic that does not have to do with what it seems to have to do with. For example, right now, all of your, the things that you discussed at the beginning of our talk were these frightened parts of your personality that you felt had to do with the puppy and why is it sick and what can you do with it? But I want to suggest another way of looking at this, that it had nothing to do with the puppy, that it never has to do your painful emotions with what's happening in the world. What happens in the world activates an internal dynamic in you. And that dynamic creates these painful physical sensations. And that dynamic, Julie, existed before you got your puppy. It existed before you had the puppy that you remember as a child. It existed, in many cases, before you were born. And you can check this out yourself, that it existed before you got your puppy. 
because you can look at these physical sensations and these thoughts and see that you've experienced them all before, mm -hmm. several times. And they didn't have to do with this puppy or the puppy in your childhood. They didn't have to do with anything except this internal dynamic. And every time it got activated, it caused these experiences in you and will continue to cause those experiences in you until you create authentic power. So That's talk the new more, consciousness. Yeah, talk more about exactly what you mean with authentic power. Well, that's what I've been talking about since you and I said hello. It's real power. The old understanding of power, while we were limited to the five senses, was the ability to manipulate and control the world, including other people. The new understanding of power is the ability to align your personality. That's the part of you that you're living now and that you think many people think is all that they are. But as you become multisensory, you begin to realize that you're much more than that. And as you align this much more than, as you align your personality with the much more, that's your soul. That enables you to begin to relate to people, <clears throat> relate to the world with, appreciation and gratitude and love. Creating authentic power is a movement, a conscious, deliberate, aware movement from fear to love, from unempowered to empowered. When you're unempowered, you're in the control of the external world. If your puppy dies, you're crushed. If somebody offends you, you're angry. If somebody betrays you, you become indignant. But when you create authentic power, you're able to look at the emotions that all of the things in the world can activate in you. And it's not those things in the world that are activating the emotions. It's those things in the world that are activating internal dynamics in you. And when you create real power, that's what you're dealing with. That's what you're changing. You're no longer trying to change the world. Because the most that you can get from changing the world is temporary happiness. Mm -hmm. If the dog gets well, you're happy. But then if it gets sicker and dies, you're despondent and you're sad and you grieve. Happiness depends upon what happens in the outside world. When you create authentic power, you don't create happiness. You ignite joy in you. And joy is independent of what happens in the world. That's the power. That's authentic. That's the power that's real. You're not caught up in what happens in the earth school, which is this time and space and matter and duality. You are interested in your heart. And if you want to know what can bring you in that direction, check out your meaning. What gives you the most meaning in your life? Is it raising puppies, perhaps? Family, yeah. Family, yes. And what gives you meaning, as much meaning or maybe even more than your family? I love the work that I do. Yes, yes, exactly. And why? What gives you meaning in the work that you do? Makes me feel fulfilled to help people come back to their soul self. Yes, yes. That's the most meaningful and joyful thing that you can do in your life. So we have that in common, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. I have a question for you, though, on that. Do you feel that people who are really in alignment with the personality of their soul and the, that authentic power, do they not feel any sadness or grief when they lose a parent or a child or a loved one? Yes, they do. Well, I can't speak for everyone because there's many authentically powerful people. And I'm not saying I'm fully authentically powerful, but I'm working on it. I used to be addicted to sex, angry, macho. I was a paratrooper, and I liked it. And now I love people. Other things give me meaning. But back to your question. Do people? A wise friend once told me, 
He said, Gary, when you see somebody that you think is far beyond you, say like a Zen master, and you think, he can't feel what I feel. He just doesn't feel it. That's the way he is. Perhaps he feels what you do even more acutely than you do. But he has more ability to make responsible choices. Yeah. It is not an easy path to be in the earth school. And you cannot be in the earth school without a personality. And every personality has frightened and loving parts of itself. And your opportunity in the earth school is to locate and become and experience all of the frightened parts and challenge them in just the way that I've described by using your emotional awareness and your responsible choice to act from love instead of from fear. And when you do that, then you begin to experience more meaning in your life, more joy, more fulfillment, more creativity. And you can give the gifts that you were born to give. Mm -hmm. And that's where your joy comes from. Yeah. And with that personality of the soul, when you really start to work through some of those emotional layers, I think a lot of times women are taught that they're not supposed to have wants or needs, but there really is this calling that just mm -hmm. comes from your heart um, to go in a particular direction. And it's not ego driven. It's driven with this intention to serve and to help and to share your gifts. Um, how do you help people or, or help people to see that those wants aren't bad, that they're part of the soul that wants to experience this life? Well, first of all, I wouldn't suggest looking at working your way through those layers. It's not working your way through anything. It's becoming aware, mm -hmm. emotionally aware so that you can make responsible choices. Now, you can call that working your way through, but you're not working your way through anything. You are challenging the magnetic attraction, the strength of a frightened part of your personality that creates destructively when you act on it. And you are cultivating a loving part of your personality that creates constructively and blissfully when you choose to act on it now you're saying, but what if I have a calling? What do you mean by a calling? When you just feel like you have, um, I don't believe that God universe source comes in and just gives you, no, no, it's here's not a matter the of belief. life. It's not yeah. a matter of belief. What do you feel when you feel a calling? Put it that way. I just know, like, I know, like, I know I have to take this next step. Like maybe I try and ignore it, but it keeps coming back. And I know that that is the direction that I have to go. It, it won't leave me alone. It just keeps coming back. Okay. Now I think I understand what you're saying. Then whether that comes from love or it comes from fear depends upon whether you're attached to the outcome. If you are attached to the outcome of what you do, you are pursuing the old kind of power, mm -hmm. external power, the ability to manipulate and control. If you are feeling what your heart wants to do, and I'm not talking about the pump, I'm talking about the part of your personality or parts of your personality that are the most grounded and healthy and sane and joy-filled parts of you. When you act on them, they have no attachments. You can share everything that you have. And if somebody says, I think that's new age woo-woo myself, you're not attached. Yeah. You, you can love them regardless of what they say or do. That's mm -hmm. authentic power. It's not dependent on other people satisfying the needs of frightened parts of your personality. Mm -hmm. Love doesn't need. Love doesn't hurt. Mm -hmm. Love is not the same as need. Mm -hmm. And yes, everyone in the earth school can feel pain 
has frightened parts because every personality has loving and frightened parts. My beloved, Linda Francis, soul left the earth school about a year and a half, and the pain that I felt was immense. And I decided to use it because I know that nothing happens to me in the earth school that is not for the benefit of me. And I don't mean to make me wealthy, to make me more healthy. I mean my spiritual development. And when you look at what happens to you in your life in the same way, you'll be able to say to the universe, thank you for whatever comes your way, whether it hurts or it feels wonderful. And then you won't be saying, well, this is better because it feels good. And that's not as that's that's not better. That's worse because it feels bad. You'll say, thank you. Thank you, because I can learn from anything that I experience and everything that I experience. Now, I say can learn doesn't mean will learn. <laughs> A lot of us are stubborn, huh? It's not stubbornness. It's fear. Mm -hmm. And that stubbornness or fear keeps you creating again and again and again as you have created before. And sometimes as you have created all your life. And sometimes as you have created in lives other than this one. The Buddhists call that cyclical ignorance. They call it uh, samsara, the wheel of suffering. And so that continues until you step in and do something about it. Will is this energy, right? Intention is this energy, and it fuels you and drives you forward. And there's just that some... Intention is a quality of consciousness. And how you use that quality of consciousness, how you use anything, depends upon your will. If you want to go upstairs, that's where you'll go. If you want to turn left, that's where you'll turn. When you become aware of your intentions, you'll see that they are the reason for your doing something. But much more than that, they are qualities of consciousness. So when you give your show like this one, if you were giving it to make yourself famous or to get more likes or more listeners, that's the pursuit of external power. It looks good, but it's not going to satisfy you because there'll always be a desire for more, more listeners, more likes, and to influence people more. But if your intention is from your heart to support people, no matter how, in the best way that you feel is appropriate, and not be attached to the outcome, and be joyful for being able to be with them for a few minutes, and not be sad if they don't listen to you, and not be happy if they do listen to you, but to simply love them, because that's the way they are. They're on their path just like you're on your path. No one has an easy path through the earth school, mm -hmm. and you can understand that. And that, when you understand that, then you begin to become, you begin to become compassionate. Mm -hmm. A lot of that energy in there is surrender and just complete acceptance, a uh, piece of what is. Uh, I get excited about life. I, I've told the listeners a million times this story, but I started the podcast and I didn't care if a hundred people listened to it. And now it's up to over 65,000 downloads, uh, uh, week. Um, and, and it doesn't matter the number of it, but I get excited to share different topics or things with the audience. I think that excitement comes from this intention of love, of sharing this community, of this work. My guess is that you're right, but I don't know your intentions. No one does. I yeah. don't know why you make your decisions. No one does except you. That's why you alone are responsible for your own spiritual development. Only you know what you intend. But yeah. if there's ever a question in your mind, uh, you will know 
if what you're doing comes from love or fear, if suddenly your audience dropped from 65,000 downloads a week to uh, 2,800. If a part of you says, oh my goodness, what have I done wrong? Oh, this is a sad day. Well, that's an exaggeration. I know that. But it's to make a point that if you are attached, then you are in fear. And I get excited. I get excited about talking about exactly the things that we're talking about. That's why I'm so happy to be talking with you. And I am not attached to it. Or if I am, or if I think I am, I use my emotional awareness to see if I am. Mm -hmm. I guess my aha moment there was just that I think I've thought of surrender and acceptance kind of this just nothingness energy, but not the fact that you can still have this positive intention from love and that excitement energy and still have surrendered and accepted and let gone of the attachment to the outcome. Yes. Yes. Yes, you can. But yeah. it's good to be always vigilant, to know at all times what you're experiencing, what your emotions are telling you, and whether or not you're acting from love or you're acting from fear. You know, there's a common, um, frightened parts of the personality often caretake, but there's a difference between caregiving and caretaking. Mm. Caregiving is simply giving, like you're describing, from your heart. There's no second agendas. There's no attachments. I love you, and that's the way it is. But you don't even have to say that. It's, it is what's coming from you. But when you're caretaking, you're taking care of someone else because you want them to feel better so that you'll feel better about yourself because they feel better. And that's pursuing external power. That's gotcha. a manipulation. That's the I difference. That. And when I say, when you use the word surrender, I think you're using it in a wonderful way. But you can tell me, The last step in creating authentic power is to release your own to a higher form of wisdom, to know in your intentions, thy will be done. Mm -hmm. In other words, take your hands off the steering wheel and let your life go into the hands of the universe completely. Now yeah. that is a surrender, but surrender is not the right word to use when you're experiencing a frightened part of your personality. Well, there. I think, oh, yeah, sorry. The frightened part of your personality is not going to change. It's not going to become loving. It's always going to be whatever it is, resentful, vengeful, superior and entitled or inferior and in needing to please. It's given to you as a gift. Whenever I encounter a frightened part of my personality, and I encounter them a lot, I know it's the universe's gracious way of showing me a part of my personality that I need to become aware of and challenge and move beyond the control of in order to give the gifts that I was born to give. You can't do that while you're angry, superior, judgmental, thinking you're better than someone or thinking that you're worse than someone. All of those prevent you from giving your gift. It's beautiful. Um, and that is, uh, you know, letting God universe source take the wheel and take things in whatever direction they need to take it um, has always been ingrained in me. I grew up in a very, very religious family and um, that's always been mm -hmm. primary driver within my heart where I think I've seen people around me struggle throughout the years is okay well if you give over everything to god universe source to do you don't have to do anything i've seen people sit back on the couch you know six months god's gonna bring it to me god's gonna bring it to me and i'm like you gotta get up you know you gotta take some action you gotta get to work you gotta go do this or you like you have to go god isn't embodied here except for through you go make it happen. You have the spark. Go carry it out. Yes. And be aware of your intention. Yeah. Be aware of your intention because then you can make sure that that intention is love. 
if mm-hmm. other people that you're talking to and and suggesting that they get up and do something, I agree with you. God will make it happen. If you stay on the couch, God will take your partner from you. God will take your house from you. God will have your business fail. By God, I'm not talking about a religious God. I'm talking about, I think, what you're talking about, because I didn't come from a religious family. I'm talking about love. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the essence of the universe. Mm -hmm. Let me suggest to you uh, something that you can apply if if it feels right to you. In every moment, do your best to do this. Trust. That's what you're talking about. And then relax. Yeah. Because you can't relax until you trust. And then do your best. Mm -hmm. And then enjoy yourself. Now let's go back to the do your best part. Because that's what we've been talking about throughout our conversation. If you don't care about whether you're acting from love or fear, as long as you do it and you want to do it, mm, you will get exactly what you're creating. It's not punishment. It's exactly what you need in order to grow spiritually. The universe is love. Everything that you're experiencing in the Earth School is compassionate. The Earth School itself is a compassionate gift, even though you hurt sometimes even though it seems as though it is the cause. Surrender to the universe is a beautiful experience. But do your work first. Be aware of what you're feeling. Is it coming from love or is it coming from fear? If it's coming from fear, do you choose to act on it knowing that it's coming from fear and that you're going to create distance consequences that are unpleasant to encounter? If it's coming from love, are you going to give it without attachment? Well, these are some things to think about. Surrender to what? Surrender to love, yes. If you surrender to fear, you can do that too. Those are choices. What will they create for you? And I'm suggesting that if you Surrender to fear, it'll create painful, destructive consequences. And in my experience, the universe, whether you call it God or love or consciousness or life, does not look in terms of good and bad, well done and not so well done, reward and punishment. It looks at the universe in terms of limitation and opportunity, put it that way. When you're in fear, you're more limited. When you're Mm -hmm. in love, you're less limited. It looks at the universe in terms of cause and effect. Every intention is a cause, and it creates effects. And when you act on that cause, you will experience that effect. No matter when or where, you will experience it. It will come back to you. In the East, this is called karma. Mm Karma is not a punishment. It's not a problem. It's the universal impersonal teacher of responsibility so that eventually you become responsible for what you create. You're aware of it. You choose to create with love and you act and you speak accordingly. Until then, some of the things you do, if you're not aware of your intentions or how you're using your will, come from fear and they will create consequences that are painful. And if you're not aware of those, when those consequences come to you, you'll say, why did this happen to me? Whoa, what did I do? I didn't intend this. You did. You intended it. You intended fear when you acted towards someone and you created consequences. And now you're experiencing those consequences. When you create authentic power, you become emotionally aware and you become responsible for what you create. When you're in the earth school, which we are now, you're not told, do this, do that. This is the exquisite beauty of the earth school. There are no shoulds. There are no have-tos. They're either do this or you're out of luck in a big-time way. And if you do this, things are going to smooth out and be very good for you. That's not my experience of the universe. 
my experience is that the universe is one of graciousness, of compassion, of love, not sentimental love. And that love extends to you in this learning environment. No one tells me, no one tells you what to do. That's why I started our talk together to say, I don't suggest that you take anything that I say as true just because I say it. But rather, if you resonate with something that I say, experiment with it. And if it produces good consequences, experiment some more. That's what you have a life for, to experiment with. I know we're almost at time, but can I ask you one more question? Yes. Okay. Um, thank you. When you are going about your day and you find that there's a part of you that's coming from fear and you become aware of that within you, is there a process that you use to become even more aware of what that is? That is a great question. And the answer is yes, there is a process. And the process is exactly what we've been talking about. Apply your emotional awareness. Turn your attention away from what you think in the world is causing that fear. Look inside of you at your energy processing centers. And we've talked about throat, chest, and solar plexus. And look for physical sensations. And if the physical sensations you find there are uncomfortable or painful, then you know that you're in a frightened part of your personality. And if you act on it, you will create painful consequences for yourself. This is mastery. You're developing mastery. And your life becomes like a canvas. And you are the artist. And you decide what you paint. You decide the colors you will use. You decide what palette you will put on the canvas. Will it be joyful or will it be heavy and sad? And if it's heavy and sad, what will you do about it? Blame others and create more heaviness and sadness? Or will you create a new kind of power? authentic power. And this is possible now because we are in the midst of a transformation of human consciousness that has never happened before. Never. Mm -hmm. There have been people in our history who have been authentically empowered, but never have all of us and acquired a new consciousness at the same time over th only three human generations that's very fast. Mm -hmm. It took 300,000 years to develop the old consciousness. And now we're encountering a new one. And that's what I love sharing and explaining so that people can recognize the new consciousness in themselves, like you. You recognize mm -hmm. it, and but not everyone does as well as you do. And when they do, they'll begin to see why the world is the way it is why it seems to be coming apart and, dis and disintegrating. It is. That's because this world was built by five sensory humans using external power. And external power now creates only violence and destruction. So everything built on it is now becoming dysfunctional on the way to disintegration. And in its place are emerging new systems social structures, interpersonal structures that are based on authentic power and not external power. That's why it's so exciting to be alive now. That's so exciting to be able to contribute to this world. And how do you do that? By creating authentic power so that you know the difference between love and fear so that you're not, without awareness, contributing fear by acting in fear. But instead, because you have emotional awareness and you use it, because you've developed responsible choice and you choose responsibly to create consequences that you're willing to assume responsibility for, because of that, you are contributing to the new world. And it's emerging right now as the old world collapses around us and crumbles at our feet. We're born to create authentic power to contribute love instead of more fear. And in my experience, this is, this is how to do it. This is the path of the elegant spirit. 
Beautiful. Gary, I'm so sorry to hear about Linda and thank you so much for being here. You are just such a beautiful human being and soul. And I'm just so grateful for spending this time with you. You're welcome. And you needn't be sorry about Linda. When a personality dies, it's gone. It's done. It's not coming back. But that is a moment at which the soul, that part of the soul, chooses to return home. The personality doesn't. I'm still in touch with Linda, very much so. She's a part of my life. She's still my beloved. I'm in the earth school, and she's not. And since millions, billions by now are becoming multi-sensory, they're beginning to have experiences such as these too. So they're able to see not only what power is, its alignment of the personality with the soul, but what love is, it's giving from the heart without attachment to the outcome, but also what death is, it's the return home to non-physical reality of the soul. But the, the love, the energy, the voice of that soul exists and will always exist, as will your soul. Hmm. Thank you so, so much, Gary. Your book, The Seed of the Soul, I know has touched millions of lives around the world and mine. Um, I just wanted to give you the opportunity, if you have a website, or, or we'll put the links to the book in the show notes, but are there any other places that you'd like people to find your work? Yes, you can go to our website, seatofthesoul.com, the same name as the book. And we have different ways that we have developed to support people. Being on podcasts is one of them. And I love being on yours. Thank you so much for this invitation and for sharing me with your wonderful extended family. Actually, our families are extended far beyond anything we can imagine. We are part of life. We are life. Now I what? believe that. I believe that with all of my, all of my being. Thank you so much, Gary, and blessings to you and uh, welcome invitation back anytime. Thank you. And I accept already. I accept. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful soul. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name's Julie. You know, I'm all about connecting you with messages from your angels and loved ones on the other side. If you've been listening today and you're super excited and just have to know which angels are around you right now, who's connecting with you, and what messages they have for you, go to theangelmedium.com. Register for a session. You can do a reading with me or a member of my team, and we can help you in making sure that your angels are doing the very best they can to support you and guide you to your best life. If this sounds like you, virtual sessions, they're only offered on my website. Sign up today. And if you're the person who's really excited, you can sign up for my Angel Reiki School to become a certified angel messenger. That's for the healers among us who feel called to grow their intuition to the max and serve humanity with their gifts. You'll learn Reiki, mediumship, how to deliver angel messages, and how to get clients. That's the Angel Reiki School at theangelmedium.com or DM me on Instagram at Angel Podcast with any questions. Before you go, connect with your angels by placing your hands on your heart. Take a deep breath. Imagine a doorway filled with God's unconditional love is right in front of you. Step into that love and feel it as it fills your body, chakras, and auric field. Now ask your angels, what would you have me know today? And open yourself to the positive, loving messages they have just for you. <laughs> 